Good evening. How's everyone doing tonight? Good? Are you feeling good? Yeah. You're feeling refreshed? Yeah. Doesn't it feel nice to be back on campus? Yeah. Yes. My name's Lester Aleman from the class of 2007. And I'm the current president of the Grinnell College Alumni Council. It is my honor to welcome each and every one of you to the 142nd Annual Alumni Assembly. I, I love the clappers tonight, thank you so much. I've just gotten through two lines and I'm already getting claps. On behalf of President Harris, <laughs> okay, so she's the one you really came to see, right? Okay, I'll try to hurry this up. On behalf of President Harris, the Grinnell College Board of Trustees, the college's administration, the students, faculty, and the hardworking staff, I want to thank each of you for joining us this weekend. It's been a very long two years and it feels so good to be back together here in the prairie that we call Grinnell. Before we get started, I want to acknowledge that we're on the ancestral territory of the Meswaki, Sauk, and Iowa peoples, whose land was taken from them through the encroachment of white settlers, and then formally in 1845 through government and land concessions. We wish to pay respect to the Meswaki, Sauk, and Iowa elders, both past and present, and to recognize the Meswaki nation that exists today in Tama County less than 30 miles from Grinnell College. Okay, it's really wonderful to see so many of us gathered in here today in Herrick Chapel on this wonderful Iowa afternoon. The weather's so beautiful, right? It's so, the view, the universe wants us to be here together. We have a great program for you today. My fellow alumni council members will be present with me um, and they're gonna present this year's alumni awards, which is exciting. Uh, and President Ann Harris will give her remarks about the state of the college. Before we continue our program this afternoon, I'd like to share a few statistics about the impressive group gathered here this weekend. We have over 852 alumni here for reunion. Impressive. From over 46 states, including, well not including, plus the District of Columbia. Gotta give it up for DC. Yeah. And eight other countries. Amazing. Please allow me to share with you the number of people from each class year who have joined us this weekend. And you know we're in a very celebratory mood, so if you want to clap for all these years, that's totally cool too. From the class of 1961, 12 alumni. From the class of 1962, 27 alumni. From the class of 1965, 28 alumni. From the class of 1966, 19 alumni. From the class of 1970, 52 alumni. From the class of 71, 55 alumni. celebrating their 50th reunion class, the class of 1972, 66 alumni. <laughs> a 
I recognize you from the lunch. Hello. <laughs> we shared barbecue. Okay. From 1975, 19 alumni. From 1976, 35 alumni. From 1977, 20 alumni. From 1986, 44 alumni. I almost forgot my line, but then I remember my lines are in the book. <laughs> From the class of 1987, 66 alumni. <laughs> class of 88, 47 alumni. <laughs> Celebrating their 25th reunion, the class of 1997, 50 alumni. From the class of 2000, the millennials. <laughs> My generation, I'm with you, I'm with you. 57 alumni. From the class of 2001, setting a record this year, 89 alumni. Oh. And finally, from the class of 2000, well, not finally, there's a little more that we're going to talk about. But from the class of 2002, 71 alumni. We're also thrilled to have 95 alumni here from other reunion classes. <laughs> Huge shout out to the Grays, a uh, very spectacular group. Can't get enough of Grinnell. Welcome, everyone. A round of applause for everyone here tonight. <laughs> you want some more numbers? Yeah, we like numbers at Grinnell, right? We like good numbers. <laughs> someone said yes. Clearly someone from the Board of Trustees said yes. <laughs> we always like good numbers. Uh, we want to thank the more than 7,300 donors who have supported Grinnell College so far this year with gifts and pledges totaling over 32.9 million. I'd like to see that in a briefcase. <laughs> it over. Give it to Anne. <laughs> a special thanks to everyone who stepped forward as part of this, as part of this spring's Scarlet and Give Back Day. We love that. With your help and that of more than 2,500 of our other alumni and donor friends, we once again surpassed expectations, raising over 1.2 million for Grinnell. I especially want to thank Betsy Walcott from the class of 75. <laughs> Tommy Airday from the class of 95. <laughs> and Steven Sandquist from the class of 95. <laughs> for leading the way through their inspiring challenge to the college community. Thank you. But as you all know, Scarlet and Give Back Day was just one day out of the whole year. And as I'm sure you'll not be surprised to learn, your classes have given generously throughout the entire year. Collectively, your classes raised over $6.7 million for Grinnell this year, including several amazing new class funds. The class of 1997 Endowed Scholarship Fund and the class of 1972 Endowed Internship Fund. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's powerful stuff. Thank you so much to these classes. Speaking of new funds, our 50th reunion classes this year have demonstrated incredible leadership for the college over the last three years. With leadership from one of my favorites, one of my, one of my favorite people ever, my good friend Chris Meyer, class of 70, right over there. <laughs> With the good leadership from Chris, the class of 1970 raised an incredible 2.5 million for their class gift with 42% participation from their class. <laughs> Much of that went to establish the class of 1970 endowed scholarship. Mary Bruner, class of 71. and Ann Taylor Schwaller, class of 71 as well, <laughs> led their class to raise also 2.5 million for the class of 1971 endowed scholarship fund, and an additional 125,000 for the Andy W. Lowy 71 Washington DC internship fund. They achieved nearly a 50% class participation in the 50th reunion year fundraising efforts. Way to go. And this year, with leadership from Mike Daly, class of 72, the class of 1972 committed to creating a new internship fund for students through the Center for Careers, Life, and Service, and have already raised over 1.2 million for this fund in other areas of campus. Since we're talking a lot of numbers, my rent's due. <laughs> I live in New York, and you know how that goes. So uh, if anyone wants to raise money for the Lester Rent Fund, <laughs> we'll talk later. I'm just kidding. Maybe. The college, talented students, faculty, staff, and generous alumni recognize the 50th class for their lifelong commitment to Grinnell College and changing students' views of themselves and their place as alumni. On behalf of all Grinnellians, join me in thanking the classes of 1970, 71, and 72 for their extraordinary leadership. Speaking of extraordinary leadership, I would also like to recognize members of our Board of Trustees who are in attendance this weekend. They like good numbers, remember. <laughs> if you're a current, retired, or life trustee, please stand to be recognized. so much for your enduring leadership to our alma mater. Nine, oh, 160 individual class volunteers worked with the alumni office to plan over 100 presentations and activities during this weekend. Though a full list of reunion committee members can be found in your weekend schedule, I'd like to invite all reunion committee members to please stand. Our sincerest thanks and heartfelt gratitude to all of you for your service to the college. This weekend cannot happen without your hard work, so thank you very much. Another form of volunteer service to the college is the Alumni Council, whose purpose is to foster strong connections between alumni and Grinnell. A full list of current council members can be found 
in the reunion weekend schedule. I'd like to invite all current and emeritus council members to stand and be recognized. It's a pleasure leading this group, so thank you for your trust in leading the council, but also your hard work is so inspiring each and every day, so way to go, Alumni Council. All right, well that's enough of me. You're gonna hear back, you're gonna hear from me. <laughs> Who was that? 19, class of 19, it was one of those millennials. <laughs> Had to be. You'll hear from me later on, but it's now my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Chris Meyer, class of 1970, to kick off my favorite part of this assembly, the presentation of the Alumni Awards. Good afternoon, everyone. I am the immediate past president of Grinnell's Alumni Council. Regrettably, my council tenure of six years will end with the conclusion of this assembly. That service has been my honor and privilege, and I will be deeply saddened when my term ends. As we move further into this celebration, I am happy to have the opportunity to announce the winner of the beautiful quilt that you saw on display at the registration desk. This lovely piece of art was quilted by my dear friends, Nancy Sco Ackerman Schofield and Mary Bruner, both class of 1971, in honor of their love for Grinnell and in honor of, or, and on the occasion of their 50th reunion. Sadly, we lost Nancy to cancer last October. This was her last project. So this is especially meaningful to her classmates, friends, and husband, Ken, class of 71. Ken is here this weekend to share this quilt with one of you, while also raising additional funds for the class of 1971 Endowed Scholarship Fund. So, drum roll please. The proud new owner of the quilt is Kip Wall. It is now my pleasure to share more with you about the 2022 Alumni Awards. Each year, two graduating seniors are selected to receive Alumni Awards from the Alumni Council. Two weeks ago, at baccalaureate during commencement weekend, my council colleague, Becky Reitz Neal, class of 65, had the pleasure of presenting awards on behalf of the Alumni Council to two graduating seniors, Lynn Tang and Maya Larson, both graduates who embody the very best of the Grinnell experience. However, as we all know, the Grinnell experience does not end at commencement. And today, we will present awards to 13 alumni who demonstrate just that. These alumni have distinguished themselves in their careers and in their service to their communities and to Grinnell College. The selection of these award recipients is one activity that the Alumni Council takes very seriously and devotes a great deal of attention. I would like to recognize and thank 
the members of this year's Alumni Awards Selection Committee. Tom Triplett, 69. Claudia Beckwith, 77. Kate Goddard, 91. And Jake Joseph, 2011. I would also like to specially thank my council colleague, Ryan Haynes Chung, 93, for her willingness to step in and chair the college, uh, step in and chair the selection committee last year when medical challenges prevented me from doing that. We received nominations from fellow classmates, other alumni, faculty, staff, and even family members. Each nomination is carefully considered. Previous alumni awards recipients have distinguished themselves in virtually every field, and several of them have continued their service to Grinnell through selection to the college's board of trustees. I also want to honor and acknowledge the alumni award recipients from the 50th and 55th and 50th reunion classes who are celebrating uh, their reunions on campus with us this weekend. As I read your name, please stand. Barbara Hunt Moore, 65. Delabian Rice Thurston, 66. Tom Check, 70. Merrill Penson, 70. I know you're here. Sheena Brown, Sheena Brown Thomas, 71. And Francis Gray, 71. I also want to recognize award recipient Dottie Dosi Metzler, 66, whom we sadly lost in the fall of 2020. We are so pleased her husband, Dick Metzler, 65, is here with us today. And if you missed our virtual alumni assembly event last year, you can still find it on the online reunion archives. We are also very pleased today to have 46 recipients of alumni awards in the past on campus for this reunion. Would those of you who are present please stand and receive our recognition. At this time, alumni council members will read citations for our 2022 alumni award recipients. Award recipients should come forward to receive their certificates after their name is called. To kick us off, I'm delighted to invite one of our emeriti council members and past council president, Nancy schmulbach Malley, 61, to come forward. know you've arrived at this event when you're down in the very first row. <laughs> and we are this year. Our first award recipient <clears throat> is a staunch advocate for diversity and inclusion and the development of minority and women businesses. Stationed in Peru with the U.S. Peace Corps, this alumnus met Senator Robert F. Kennedy, who recruited him to be a staffer at the Bedford Stuyvesant Restoration Corporation in Brooklyn. In 1968, he became the first African-American consultant for global consulting firm McKinsey and & Company. And he immediately began the internal campaign to actively recruit additional minority associates confronting organizational resistance head on. Seven years later, our honoree formed his own consulting firm where he developed supplier diversity programs for the cities of Louisville, Atlanta, and Chicago, at several federal agencies, and at private sector companies such as AT&T, Burger King, and Toyota. In the wake of his work, these agencies and companies spent billions of dollars with underrepresented business owners 
and led to the significant amounts of capital flowing into inner city communities. As a senior partner and now senior advisor for the Boston Consulting Group, he led his firm's workforce diversity, ethnic marketing, and minority business development consulting practice. This Grinnellian is the recipient of many iconic awards, including being elected to the inaugural class of the Minority Business Hall of Fame. As a longtime mentor to Grinnell students and young alums, this alum was the first African American elected to the college's Board of Trustees in 1969. And he became a life trustee in 1995 and was selected that same year to Grinnell's Athletic Hall of Fame. At Grinnell's 2008 commencement, he was awarded an honorary Doctor of Laws. We are pleased to honor Jim Lowry, class of 61, with the 2022 Grinnell College Alumni Award. junction in our country's politics, our next awardee is a leading voice in the national debate over transforming health care, the health care system, in a way that it ensures all Americans access to first-rate health care. In 1974, this alumna moved to Concord, Massachusetts, where she was elected to the town's public housing authority and led expansion of the affordable housing. In the 1980s, she and her husband established the Families USA Foundation to advocate for progressive health reforms. She channeled foundation grants to grassroots organizations of low-income seniors, people with disabilities, and home care workers to identify their health access problems and build power to negotiate policy solutions. In 1998, our honoree established her own consumer health advocacy organization, Community Catalyst, to engage disadvantaged people and communities to fight for health care justice. The community-led state policy reform effort that started in Massachusetts eventually spread to all 50 states. This alumna and her staff have engaged with organizations to reform Medicaid policy, prescri prescription drug prices, and diversity in the healthcare workforce, just to name a few. While Community Catalyst has always centered on healthcare justice, it currently has started to dramatically broaden the movement's organized grassroots base and build power to challenge discriminatory racial and other structural inequalities. This alumna received the honorary degree from Grinnell College commencement very recently on May 23rd for her significant contributions to social justice and the health of vulnerable citizens, and I was fortunate enough to be there front and center. We are delighted to honor Kate Stephan Villers, class of 61, with a 2022 Co Grinnell College alumni. <laughs> Our next honoree from the 60th Reunion Cluster is a civil rights fighter, courageous public sector leader, and a catalyst for career success for many people. Not long after leaving Grinnell, this alumnus coordinated the Chicago Urban League's efforts to increase voter registration and improve voter awareness. He later joined the US Department of Justice, where he specialized in negotiation and mediation between government agencies, local authorities, and community activists. His next stop was the Ford Foundation in New York City. He spearheaded a multi-million dollar community development initiative 
aimed at providing jobs, housing, and improved quality of life in a number of targeted urban and rural communities. This awardee later headed the New York City's Department of Employment, leading the city's efforts in job training, employment, and business development. A tennis enthusiast, he brought the game to underrepresented youth in Harlem. This alumnus later trans transitioned into banking and finance world. As managing director and head of J.P. Morgan's Urban Development Public Finance Group, our honoree oversaw taking the bank to South Africa following the demise of apartheid. He said his most cherished experiences there were being spent with in the company of Nelson Mandela, from whom he established the professional development program that helped black South Africans in banking, law, and related professions. Before retirement, he also produced, I like this, wine in South Africa <laughs> as the owner of Passages Winery. This alumnus also has given time, his time to mentor students, collaborate with faculty members and administrators throughout his dedicated service on the Grinnell College Board of Trustees. And he joined the board in 1987, became a life trustee in 2002. And we are honored, thrilled to honor Ron Galt, class of 62, with a 2022 Grinnell College Alumni Award. Thank you, Nancy. I always end up with uh, conflicting feelings at these events. On one hand, I'm inspired by hearing about the awardees. On the other hand, I go away feeling like I'm such a slug. Yeah. <laughs> Our next award recipient went into public policy analysis because he wanted to dedicate his professional life to the reduction of poverty and the improvement of public policy. He has done so through numerous achievements in service with the executive and legislative branches of the federal government. As senior advisor to the Secretary of the Treasury for Budget and Economics, this alumnus worked extensively on the Balanced Budget Act of 1997, receiving one of the pens that President Clinton used to sign that legislation. In 2007, working for the U.S. Senate Finance Committee, he initiated and helped to enact an amendment to the Appropriations Bill that provided an additional $150 million of desperately needed funds for Social Security's administrative costs. A high point in our honoree's distinguished career was being nominated in 2013 by President Barack Obama and confirmed by the U.S. Senate in 2014 to serve as a member of the Social Security Administration Advisory Board. This bipartisan independent board makes recommendations to improve the Social Security program. Upon completion of the board's work, this alumnus received the Social Security's Commissioner's Citation for Exemplary Public Service. In his current role, as a senior fellow at the Center for American Progress, he is able to share his policy views with a wide audience. He has used this platform to author 11 articles on subjects ranging from the federal budget and social security issues to the need for federal aid to state and local governments arising from the pandemic. This alumnus also has remained deeply involved at Grinnell including teaching three classes, participating with several Grinnell and Washington cohorts, and establishing the Cohen Research Lab in the Humanities and Social Studies Center. Please join me in congratulating Alan Cohen, 72, for receiving <laughs> an Alumni College Award.
Our next honoree's ability to unite rather than divide and to rely on factual analysis rather than emotional, emotional or self-interested advocacy has characterized her whole career. A strong advocate for communities affected by poverty and workers' rights, this alumna has worked on national platforms for nutrition, welfare reform, reproductive health, labor rights, and children. Early in her career, as project director for the Children's Foundation, our award recipient developed advocacy and policy strategy for two federally funded nutrition programs. In the 1980s, she was deputy director for Advocates for Youth, where she promoted innovative strategies to prevent teen pregnancy, including school-based health clinics and lifting net worth network television bans on contraceptive advertising. In 1988, the Center for Law and Social Policy, a national anti-poverty nonprofit, hired this alumna to create a way for state welfare advocates to share news and lessons from the field. The resulting Family Matters newsletter served as a model for her subsequent efforts to create and nurture powerful national networks. In the past, workplace flexibility and work-life conversations typically ignored the challenges of low-income workers. This Grinnellian brought fresh insights and analysis that staked out the necessity for solutions aimed at all workers. She was also one of the early national leaders focused on promoting paid sick days and family leave legislation. For her dedication to social justice and being a voice for the voiceless, this alumna received an honorary Doctor of Laws at the 2009 Donnell College commencement. We are pleased to honor Jody Levin Epstein, 72, with a 2022 Donnell College Alumni Award. Good afternoon, I'm Claudia Beckwith from the class of 1977, and I'm delighted to present the next two awards. The next award recipient recognized that for our small town college to successfully recruit students, faculty, staff, and their trailing spouses, the city of Grinnell's downtown needed to bustle with shops, services, restaurants, and housing. He got the ball rolling by purchasing and renovating buildings in the central business district and helped the college expand its footprint there. This alumnus has devoted his career to successful multifamily housing production. He spent 35 years developing, renovating, and owning 30,000 units of market rate and government assisted housing apartment communities in the Washington DC and its close in suburbs, such as Arlington, Alexandria, and Bethesda. He left private practice four years ago to found Indelible Housing Incorporated, a nonprofit engaged in the acquisition, renovation, and preservation of distressed project-based Section 8 housing. A current Indelible Housing project is the needed modernization of the low-income Center Street apartments here in Grinnell. While in town for his 30th reunion in 2006, this alumnus purchased the vacant Cunningham's drugstore, refurbishing its iconic backlit pylon sign and leased it to the college for its first downtown bookstore. This led to seven more downtown properties that he acquired, renovated, and re-tenanted, including Prairie Canary Restaurant, Urban Loft Apartments, Specialty Crafts and Clothes Boutiques, and downtown's largest office building. These projects increased the social and economic vitality of downtown while encouraging pedestrian traffic. His latest effort to strengthen the bridge between campus and downtown is the Knapp Film and Media Center. In the design phase, the downtown building will eventually be home to the college's film and media studies classes 
as well as public events in which townspeople can mix with the college. We are delighted to honor Dick Knapp, class of 76, with the 2022 Grinnell College Alumni Award. Our next honoree's enthusiastic devotion for Grinnell College has manifested in volunteering innumerable hours to her alma mater. She has served as a reunion committee member, a GRASP coordinator, volunteer, regional volunteer, and alumni council member, including council president in 2004 to 5, when she was also an ex officio board of trustee member. Additionally, this alum has been a speaker in the alumni in the classroom and Wilson Center programs. After graduating from Grinnell, this award recipient was the first coach of the Grinnell College women's cross country and track and field teams. She was known for her positive, compassionate, and inclusive leadership. This alumna also assisted legendary coach John Fitch in the writing of his autobiography, Fitch Tales. The skill sets this awardee used to develop relationships within the alumni community have also been important to her career. As owner of her own production company, her marketing and publicity experience includes such wide ranging, ranging fields as pro sports, entertainment, commercial real estate, and government relations. She has promoted music events and toured with magician David Copperfield, coordinating promotion and logistics. Since 1987, this alum has concentrated on government relations and public policy managing coalition and grassroots efforts as for corporate, nonprofit, and governmental organizations, as well as ballot initiatives and legislative and candidate ca campaigns. In 2002, while working for Eli Lilly and Company, she focused efforts on jail diversion specialization, initiating words to deeds, changing the paradigm for criminal justice and mental health, which has developed into California's renowned interdisciplinary leadership forum. As project director for Words to Deeds, she has produced conferences and educational programs that address the nationwide challenge of reducing the number of and improving outcomes for individuals with mental illness in the criminal justice system. We are thrilled to honor Kit Wall, class of 77, with the 2022 Grinnell College Alumni Award. Good afternoon, everybody. I lost my voice a bit. Um, I'm screaming for She Man uh, <laughs> last night, so it's it's worth it. It's worth it being a horse. It's worth it. It's worth it. Uh, so hello, I'm Bernard Jackson, class of 1986, and the new president-elect of the Alumni Council. So that's great. I'm so glad that we're all together this weekend, and I hope you are having a wonderful time. It's my pleasure to present the next two awards. A consistent and persistent champion of all things Grinnell, this award recipient has created invaluable bonds within the wider Grinnell community and strengthened pride in the college. Our awardee's comprehensive involvement began when she was a student and she was a tour guide, I remember. She chaired the commencement committee and was co-chair of the concerts committee and the Grinnell Relays, which I, which I miss. As an alumna, she has been a class agent, alumni member, GRASP volunteer, and reunion committee member. A natural organizer, she energized, excuse me, alumni, through class letters and social media. Her invitations are always open to all. One classmate said that those, and I quote, who are not typically joiners find themselves caught up 
and the alumnus excitement about connections and Grinnell, end quote. This alumna first worked on Capitol Hill before finding her way to public television at WETA. Over the course of 20 years, she has worked in six different jobs in five different departments, mostly in live television as a production manager, and then managing the station's website. For the last 16 years, she's been working toward retirement <laughs> while farming with her husband in Idaho. She was actively involved in the Washington, D.C. sesquicentennial celebrations in a pub in Idaho. This alumna founded a new Grinnellians and created the Grinnell in Idaho Facebook group. <laughs> <laughs> only you, Becky, only you. I love it. Before the pandemic, she partook in many Grinnell and Boise lunch gatherings. Recognizing the benefits of broadening the 1986 network, our honoree invited members from other classes to join in groups she established. She has been one of the main reasons why the mid-1980 classes have such a strong presence at reunions. And also, we just like to party. In fact, this alumna has been to 15 reunions herself, including everyone held since 2010 as part of the Gray Movement. She's awesome. We are pleased to honor Rebecca Quirk, class of 86. With the 2002 Grinnell Alumni Award, Rebecca could not be here today, but we know she's tuning in via live stream. Thanks, Rebecca. The next Alumni Award recipient has asked hard questions of college leadership and fellow alumni and use social media to communicate the outcome of those conversations with the broader alumni community. She has always been straightforward, even when the truth was sometimes hard to hear. Her goal has always been to help students and make Grinnell better. She's an attorney with nearly 30 years of experience, having run her own practice for the majority of that time. Some of the areas in which she has practiced include healthcare, real estate, collections, and family law. For several years, she served on the Cook County Judicial Evaluation Committee as part of the Illinois State Bar Association. And she has served as a representative for children and vulnerable adults in domestic relations and probate proceedings. She is a mother of two sons, one of which, Logan Stewart, is a 2019 Grinnell graduate. I asked my sons to apply, and they did not. <laughs> Logan, Logan, Logan's a better kid. <laughs> As a black Grinnell student in the 1980s, this alumna endured challenges and lack of support. She knew that many black alums from that decade had checked out of Grinnell completely. And she felt that she had a perspective that needed to be shared. With that in mind, our awardee served on the Alumni Council. She helped found and lead the Council's Diversity and Inclusion Committee, which initiated discussions about how the college could better support BIPOC students. This alumna also created the college's first multicultural alumni, alumni reunion, which she chaired in 2017 and played a pivotal role 
into subsequent reunions. This alumni has brought together reunion goers with a long awaited return of the college band she fronted, She Man and the Masters of the Universe. In 2012, 2017, and just last night, 2022. And thus, my hostess. <laughs> we are delighted to honor Rhonda Stewart. <laughs> Class of 1986, the 2002 Cornell Alumni Award. Good afternoon. I'm Anton Jones, class of 2002, and as a first year member of the council, it's such a pleasure to present the next two awards. Des Moines' go-to person for intercultural experiences, our next honoree is deeply passionate about helping everyone understand that the differences in various cultures can be interesting, informative, and lead to great relationships. This alumna is executive director of Cultural a dramatically different approach to diversity training and inclusion efforts. Cultural specializes in creating real life interactions that spark curiosity and inspire people to want to learn about other cultural beliefs and customs. The organization helps schools, students, school students, businesses, seniors in retirement, housing, and others appreciate the diversity around them and navigate differences more gracefully. As a Grinnell student, our award recipient studied abroad in England and Wales, but it was her marriage to an international student from India that truly inspired her mastery in the field of intercultural communication. She became the first person to receive certification as an intercultural professional from the highly acclaimed Intercultural Communication Institute. Working for Principal International in the 1990s, this alumna became a leading authority in cross-cultural business communication. Since founding Cultural in 2005, this alumna has built a network of 70 ambassadors and open book storytellers representing more than 40 cultures who reach 30,000 participants each year. She often recruits first generation immigrants to share their personal stories, customs, and traditions. As a result, Central Iowa children are becoming more receptive and welcoming to cultural differences and business employees have realized how they can be more inclusive in their work practices with colleagues and customers. We are thrilled to honor Sherry Davis Gupta, class of 88, with a 2022 Grinnell College Alumni Award. If you've been enjoying the delightful photos accompanying today's Alumni Awards presentation, you can thank our next award recipient. This alumna was serving on the Alumni Council in 2010 when the group, suggest, the group was discussing ways to liven up Alumni Assembly. <laughs> she suggested projecting photos of the award recipients throughout their lives to make the experience more meaningful both for the awardee and the audience. Little did she realize there would be pictures of her on display 12 years later. <laughs> the photo edition is just one of many ideas and endeavors our honoree has come up with to support her alma mater. As a student, she coordinated Grinnell's first ever bone marrow donor drive. As an alumna, she served as a class agent, reunion committee member, GRASP regional coordinator, and was alumni council president in 2010 to 11. Since 2008, 
This awardee has also been the Grinnell and the Twin Cities Regional Network Coordinator, where she has hosted 126 alumni events. In addition to dreaming up interesting activities for alums, she is steadfast in tackling most of the thankless tasks that are essential to pulling off a great event. This alumna worked for a U.S. Senator early in her career. In 2002, she joined the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis as an administrative assistant and rose through the ranks over the last two decades. Today, she is the Assistant Vice President for Regional Outreach and Public Programs at the Minneapolis Fed. Please join me in congratulating Carmi Anna Matson, 1997, for receiving the 2022 Alumni Award. Hello, I'm Philip Hales of the class of 2002, and I'm thrilled to present our next two awards. Known for blurring the lines of hip hop, jazz, folk, and poetry with cutting edge improvisations and collaborations, our next honoree has been on stage or on records with Bell Hooks, The Last Poets, DJ, DJ Cool Herc, the father of hip hop, and many more artists. A DJ, MC, beatboxer, educator, and wedding officiant, this alumnus is oft known by his former pen name, Rabbi Darkseid. You can find him releasing music, performing, and teaching under his given name nowadays. He's created inclusive spaces on five continents, through music at concerts, on dance, floor, dance floors, and in classrooms. Our honoree began his career teaching middle school social studies and English at a New York City public school. He later developed a rap-based test prep curriculum called Fresh Prep while journeying in arts education. In 2007, this alumnus co-founded the Hip Hop Reeducation Project, a community-based arts organization that uses hip hop culture to educate marginalized and systematically undeserved, underserved young people. He's also the CEO of Say Word Entertainment, a collection of artists, producers, educators, and agents of change dedicated to creating and supporting authentic hip-hop culture globally through music. Speaking of globally, the U.S. State Department in 2015 sent this alumnus to Uganda to serve as a next-level cultural ambassador. Using the pillars of conflict resolution, social justice, and entrepreneurship, he facilitated a three-week DJ workshop. He's entering his eighth year teaching seminars of his own design at the New School University of New York, where he's also the faculty advisor to the New School Hip Hop Collective student group. He returned to his alma mater in 2018 to teach a short course, The Cypher Paradigm, Hip Hop Education, pra Praxis, Action. We're pleased to honor Samuel Sellers 2000, with a 2022 Grinnell College Alumni Award. Our final award recipient can be referred to as a pro bono all-star. That's the term the Minnesota State Bar Association, uh, the Minnesota State Bar Association uses for attorneys like him who've provided more than 50 hours of pro bono legal services annually for at least seven consecutive years. But it also fits because this alumnus has done extraordinary work on a pro bono basis in important cases seeking to redress social injustice within our society. Case in point is this Grenadian's tenacious efforts to save Douglas Tyrone Armstrong's life. Over the course of a 15-year-long representation of his client, 
This alumnus volunteered his time to travel to rural South Texas to conduct a hands-on investigation, which yielded evidence that contributed to the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals' decision to overturn Armstrong's death sentence. <laughs> Additionally, among other pro bono matters he's taken on, he represented a woman wrongfully assaulted by the Minneapolis police during a peaceful protest a few days after George Floyd's murder and helped to secure a settlement on her behalf. A partner in Maslon LLP's litigation group in Minneapolis, our honoree, our honoree focuses his legal practice on probate, fiduciary, and trust litigation and, and serves as his firm's general counsel. He's a frequent author and speaker on topics relating to both his practice and professional ethics. This alumnus also is committed to diversifying the legal profession and encouraging disadvantaged students to seek or at least consider a career in law. Through Maslon's Uplift Legal Institute for Teens, he serves not only as a board member for the organization, but as a volunteer mock trial coach for middle school students at Columbia Academy, a school where many students come from an economically disadvantaged background. We're delighted to honor Julian Zabot, class of 2000, with a 2002 Denial College Alumni Award. I'd like to ask our 2022 Alumni Awards recipients to rise one more time. Congratulations. It's now my honor to introduce our keynote speaker, President Ann Harris. Completing her second year at the college in this role, President Harris assumed the college's presidency in the early stages of COVID-19 spread. Her compassionate and decisive actions in leading the college's response to the pandemic quickly elevated her growing reputation as a trusted and admired member of the Grinnell College community. Since her appointment, she has demonstrated remarkable leadership in championing academic excellence, diversity and inclusion, and community engagement. And now, she's so excited to meet the alumni of our college as she's genuinely interested in how we, as alumni, can help to shape the college's future. Today, she will share her reflections on the year past, her vision for the year ahead, and how all of you, our most committed Grinnellians, can continue to be part of the future of our alma mater. It's my great pleasure to introduce the 14th president of Grinnell College, Anne F. Harris. Terrific. Thank you so, so very much, Lester. And I, the first thing I need to thank you for is your stamina. Um, Herrick Chapel is known for many things. Comfortable seating is not one of them. So if you need to take a stretch in the interest of wellness and uh, sustainability, please feel free to do so. What a pleasure it is to gather to honor you to be inspired by our alumni awards recipients, to be in each other's glad company here in person, and to know that many more are joining us virtually today. After all of the waiting and the postponements and the resets, it is truly a joyful occasion to be here in this very special place together. This is my first reunion. And truly, Grinnell College reunions are like no other. The, the only thing I can compare it to is one of those 
all expenses paid vacations, um, or the very best seminar. I don't know how you're choosing between the bird excursion, the museum tour, the yoga, I just found out, she-man, uh, between the music <laughs> sessions, learning about the liberal arts and prison program, or, the down, or downtown Grinnell. And all this in the company of lifelong and rediscovered friends. And that's been such a joy to see those of you who are finding each other again as well. On a personal note, I want to share with you my own wonder at the spirit of this reunion. As I hear my teenage son, a demographic that's notoriously hard to impress, come home so excited about the Rocky Horror Picture Show screening. His only, his only complaint was that I hadn't given him enough advance notice to get his outfit right. Um, but after the screening, how he, came home, how he came home and just simply said, Mom, Grinnell alumni are so cool. How some of you, and I thank you, told him to be true to himself in life, to never stop being true to himself. And how some of you, and I thank you, when he asked at a group that had gathered to dance last night, are we allowed to be here? Answered, of course, this is Grinnell. That's the spirit I take through, through his teen, teenage eyes. I am coming to know you, dear Grinnellians, through your love for each other and through your spirit of welcome and possibility to others. And both are beautiful, and both have made so very much possible. It is deeply meaningful to gather here in Herrick Chapel, in this community, as this was the site where we processed the necessity of our communities disbanding in March of 2020. At this podium stood biology professor David Campbell, who spoke to us of a global population that was immunonaive, I will never forget that term, immunonaive to a new virus. The tenderness and the fright of that phrase. At this podium, I stood and told students that they could not return from spring break if they were leaving. If you stay, you stay. If you go, you go. This is what we had to say. It was a painful, intense, and bewildering time. And it was my first full look into the heart of Grinnell. In fact, for me, it was a moment of deep commitment to this institution for its passion, for its fervor. To gather with you all here today in person or via live stream seeks to honor that passion as we hold this time together in this powerful place, this Grinnell. We've had the welcome opportunity this afternoon to honor our newest alumni awards recipients. We are honored to be in your company. You inspire us all to continue contributing to the common good. You nurture the spirit of Grinnell College. And the word nurture matters here in what we seek to honor today. The word alum comes from the Latin root meaning to nurture or to nourish. And I think and hope of the many ways that the college has nurtured you. And I want to celebrate and honor all of the ways that you nurture the college. And there are many here today who give their time and talents to Grinnell. There's a network, a constellation of care. Members of the Alumni Council, the Board of Trustees, the class and reunion volunteers, the regional volunteers, and so many more. Thank you all for your ongoing commitment to Grinnell College, to our students, and to this alumni community. On this day, when we honor alumni and when alumni honor each other, and I love that. I love the care you show for each other. And the, the, it was like a wave, all the standing ovations that were happening, just beautiful. I especially want to give recognition to Lester Alamon, class of 2007, our outgoing alumni council president. So this is that awkward part when I'm talking to him, but I'm facing you. So thank you, Lester, for your years of leadership, your deep care for people, your dedication to Grinnell and our alumni around the world, and your transformative work in the sector of higher education. It was Lester who coined the phrase that I have oft repeated now, never underestimate the prairie. That phrase pushes us to think. What else might we do here at this incredible college to surprise ourselves, to surprise the world? 
Whether it's been five years or 60 years since you graduated, you can see that the college continues to change and to surprise. I've been listening to you and learning from your impressions of the college upon your return over these past three days. You recognize the familiar and you seek out the new. You acknowledge that many things remain and just as many change. That duality is rare. You're not steeped in nostalgia when you're here. You're looking for new things and so energizing for, for me, for so many. The best way that I have to describe this phenomenon, which I think is rare, is by thinking of a medieval tapestry. Okay, no surprise, there's gonna be some medieval thing during my talk this afternoon. So, but this, the best way, this, this seeking out of the new, this recognizing of the familiar, our warp, the ground of our tapestry, are those values, what stays the same? Those values of social justice and the common good, those habits of research, deliberation, and collaboration, you heard it in all those alumni awards, that you not only recognize as familiar, but sustain in your work. That's the warp, the ground of the tapestry. Our weft, the color and the light that are interwoven to create the beautiful image of our tapestry is in the expanding and changing curriculum and pedagogy, in those buildings that many of you have commented upon that gather us in new ways, in our students' energy and innovation, in all that they want to do that we want to empower and in their thriving. And this is where being a medievalist comes in really handy. And thinking of the time of the alum, this time of nurturing, I marvel at the layering of the time of the alum, the layering of experience, the four short years of being a student here overlaid with the perpetual return of the alum. And I invite you to think of those places on campus, those labs and reading tables, those walkways and loggias, those tree groves and open fields. And think, too, of our current students and their studies and their walks and their respite. Your experiences watch over them, enter them into your legacy, and they are doing amazing things. Now, this word legacy has a fascinating original meaning. In the 14th century, it was used to designate very specifically a group of people sent on a mission, ambassadors, envoys. And I very much think of Grinnell alums. I very much think of you as people on a mission with the resolve and the brilliance to see it through. Grinnell's legacy does not just endure, it thrives and it grows because it lives in you are dedicated and marvelous alumni. It is a legacy nurtured through your connections with Grinnell and with each other and your commitment to continuing to shape our community. This is why I say critique is care. You wouldn't criticize and critique the institution if you didn't want us to be better. And we want to be better too. That's the partnership and I'll be coming back to that. Grinnellians like you have always been thoughtful vocal and active participants in society, again, I reference you to our alumni award recipients, willing to show up and speak out and working to change the world for the better. I recognize and I celebrate these traits in you and in today's students as well. This is our legacy and our future, the collective work of all the generations of Grinnellians, past, present, and future. It is a legacy we cherish and work to uphold. Now, an alumni assembly is a powerful time. When I saw the title for this, I thought, okay, alumni assembly, one in which we celebrate legacy and also one in which we claim stewardship for the experiences and possibilities of Grinnellians to come. I see this time as one in which to strengthen our resolve together. And here they are, the members of the class of 2025, They've come to us from, this is just the class of 2025, 47 states and 31 countries. All together, all of our students, they come from 50 states and over 50 countries. And I'm gonna find this out every fall. Currently, this year, there are 62 languages spoken at Grinnell College. About 90 of the students of, of this class that just entered are from outside the United States, from countries including Brazil, China, India, Ghana, South Korea, Vietnam, Uzbekistan, and Japan. 
About 50 students are the first in their families to attend college. And to Lester's point earlier, these are numbers, but these are experiences embedded in those numbers. More than 120 members of this class are domestic students of color, representing almost 30% of the class. And more than 300 of our entering students, and there's, there's only about 450, were already involved in community service and social justice work before coming to Grinnell. When I welcomed this class, the class of 2025 to Grinnell in the fall of 2021, I quoted political theorist Danielle Allen, who in her book, Talking to Strangers, Anxieties of Citizenship After Brown versus Board of Education, wrote that, quote, democracy depends on trustful talk between strangers, end quote. And I would claim that Grinnell College depends on trustful talk between strangers. And I thank each and every one of you for the many times that you opened or engaged in trustful talk at Grinnell and well beyond Grinnell. Dr. Allen's ideas are deeply formative of my own when I think of Grinnell College's impact in the world. Our fraught and wondrous world has made me focus on trust. Trust between individuals, between individuals and institutions, and between institutions, all within a vision for our college to be an agent of civic trust, moving knowledge into action for a more just and equitable society. And you do it. Those alumni award recipients inspire us to, do, to continue that work. And so I think a great deal about how Grinnell College can be a trusted institution, a trustworthy place. There's work to do. I think a great deal about how many of our students placed their trust in this institution. I think a great deal about how many of you hold this institution in trust. Trust is not static. It's not established and left unattended. It is built up and nurtured and sustained. And it's experienced through belonging and thriving. And I want to thank you all, all of you, for all that you do to build up that trust, to make it possible for students to experience Grinnell, to belong at Grinnell, and to thrive at Grinnell. It takes time and talent and treasure, and there is always more work to do. But I take both comfort and pride in our partnership to push this college to always do better. Now, there are some developments at the college that I want you to know about so that you can feel that pride in your alma mater and in our partnership in sustaining these developments. With resolve and planning and building on all of the foundational work that's been done for decades, and with many thanks to the trustees who have championed the actions I'm about to describe and recognize their importance, Grinnell College last year was able to go further than being a need-blind institution, which is already a rare feat in higher education. We are now a no-loan institution, which means yes. Thank you, for, thank you for seeing it. Um, you are incredible. We are now a no-loan institution, which means that loans are no longer packaged as part of financial aid and that it is now possible to graduate debt-free from Grinnell College. Add that. <laughs> Add to that that we are also test optional and we are in rare company, dear Grinnellians. Only eight institutions of higher education are all three and Grinnell is one of them. This is the college and its many constituents and caretakers building trust, staying true to mission, leveraging what we have to do better. We have that large endowment, but the endowment alone couldn't have moved us to no loan. As I am starting to realize, the endowment can't do everything, but with you, it can always do more. Things are possible because of you, because of that partnership. When the class of 2026 arrives this fall, 
Grinnell is projected to be a majority multicultural college. That is another major development. Domestic white students will be in the minority, and we're proud to see Grinnell achieving its longstanding aspirations to be a global college with a national voice set in a rural community. There is continuous and worthwhile work that needs to be done to continue to build trust, to engender belonging, and to create those conditions of possibility. The Grinnell College Diversity and Inclusion Plan introduced in 2017 exists now in a new format in which each vice president and administrative decision, division has identified one, two, and three-year goals for a DEI action plan. This plan helps center our proactive approach to diversity and inclusion rooted in a process of self-reflection, self dialogue, and accountability. It affirms the values we hold as a community and creates accountability about our successes and shortcomings. The theme of accountability is, is important here because I. That's what's gonna build the trust. Last year, of many things, last year we created the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion as an intentional step to raise the vis visibility of DEI work in all parts of Grinnell College. This office, which reports directly to me, has dedicated DEI professionals working with faculty, staff, and students throughout Grinnell to help our efforts to build an institution of effective and sustained equity with a focus on identity, spaces, and experiences. And I wish that you could all be here for what will be a week-long celebration of Juneteenth, the week of June 13th, in preparation for the observation of Juneteenth as a college paid holiday on Monday, June 20th. I want to acknowledge that one office, of course, no matter how dedicated, cannot do the work alone, and that's the whole point of the action plan. Each of us, and I say this in the room, each of us, individually and collectively, must take responsibility to examine and change systems, expand curricula, and create spaces that provide both affinity and community. Our success in this endeavor requires an active, intentional, coordinated effort to promote the full participation of all members of the community including our alumni. And thank you for your voices, for everything, that all the momentum that you're building too. Our work then is to create conditions of possibility within which Grinnell students can research, discover, deliberate, and collaborate. These academic modes are also civic modes. They are habits of mind, the pledges of work that will shift systems and change societies. Third development, Grinnell College is about to enter a new chapter and a new partnership as the only small liberal arts college in the United States to have a fully unionized student workforce. And, and that's not just the class of 1970, 71, and 72 cheering. I, I heard a lot about, about some history there. I will always be grateful to the student union leaders for their outreach to me to open a conversation, to engage in trustful talk between strangers, for the many deliberative sessions that chair of the board, Michael Kahn, and I had with them, for the support of the board to work out a neutrality agreement with the union. I'm exceedingly proud of that document. It's, it's available online, Grinnell College Neutrality Agreement. Um, for the support of the board to work out a neutrality agreement with the union that, because we were able to achieve one, lays a strong foundation in a bargaining obligation section, section seven, for the collective bargaining to come. Now there's no pretense that this will be easy work, but it will be worthwhile work engaged in a deliberative process built on and continuously needing to build trust. With your presence, inspiration, and support, we are able to connect our students with the possibilities they carry within themselves on social movement issues, on, on the issues I've been talking about, and beyond. I want to mention just a few, and I'd characterize these as things to believe in, things to strive for, things that move knowledge into action for a more just and equitable society, starting at Grinnell. 
So these are some of these developments will be familiar. Um, others are just taking off. So the Center for Careers, Life, and Service really helps what um, craft what I've come to call equitable launch. It is one thing to come into the institution, but what about leaving on an equitable launch? The CLS helps students explore their values and strengths and encourages them to pursue careers, communities, and lives that align with their needs and goals. That is a complex process. And this center is making exploration and experiential learning possible for all students through professional development grants, internship funding, and I cannot emphasize enough how much, don't, how much your contributions mean to that. That's $300,000 annually that is spent in supporting internship funding. Um, other initiatives like the New Career Clothing Closet and many, many more great ideas. Thank you for that. The Institute for Global Engagement provides opportunities for students to travel with purpose and graduate with distinctive experiences, knowledge of the world, and intercultural skills. These enable them to pursue careers around the world as they are, engage in debate over international issues, and make vital contributions as global citizens. And I invite you to go to the IGE website at some point and see some of the incredible courses that are being taught in the, in the GLP, the Grinnell Learning um, Program. It's just brilliant and you'll want to go. And, and actually we're gonna see if that's possible at some point. Uh, research opportunities that encourage students to pursue their own independent research and collaborate on faculty-led projects both on campus and beyond. And we're really starting to be a leader in those faculty-student research opportunities. Participation in research gives students, of course, a deeper understanding of subject matter and research methodology as they develop the knowledge and independent thinking skills needed to succeed in graduate schools or careers. And I also see it as a very immediate way to move knowledge into action. With the recent addition, many of you have had the tour of the Humanities and Social Studies Center. We're bringing together non-fine arts humanities and social studies departments in a shared space to create innovative learning environments. They're called neighborhoods. Um, and, the, and the ideas do flow, like the people, that encourage multidisciplinary collaboration, active inquiry, and student research. And as you're starting to hear, we are in the process of designing a residential space like few others in higher education. The Civic Engagement Quad, the CEQ, because it's Grinnell, we have to put initials, the CEQ will be built in downtown Grinnell at Broad and Sixth, as you, as you go by, to be a student residence housing and hosting trustful talk between strangers, those conversations that seek to build understanding and connection and social change. From the economic vitality of having students downtown to the partnerships that students and community members can create to address the issues of our times. Um, and students have talked about talking about rural mental health, um, food scarcity, third grade literacy rates. That's actually a completed project with AmeriCorps. It is a way of building on and honoring the work that this college has done, that you have done, to engage your classroom and campus experiences with the communities around you, the communities that you shape. So stay tuned for much, much more on that. Resources such as these, along with our remarkably strong academics, distinctive, individually advised curriculum, that remains um, absolutely a, a signature opportunity at Grinnell, and outstanding academic facilities don't just recruit the best and brightest students, they also help us attract an unparalleled faculty of renowned scholars, experts, advisors, and mentors. This is getting to be a really key part of the faculty experience, and I want to acknowledge the labor of mentoring as well. All these faculty who are dedicated to their student success and who partner with staff to do so. None of the aha breakthrough moments that happen every day in our classrooms would happen without, of course, our brilliant faculty and their staff partners. We're dedicated to, to recruiting and retaining a world-class faculty and I'm pleased to share that we are making a commitment to expand the number of tenure track faculty positions in the years to come at the college. shining light in the prairie. This effort will help us to enhance and expand curricular offerings. It will also help us reduce reliance on term faculty for our curriculum, which is also a labor um, issue. We're excited about the efforts of a working group of faculty and staff who are preparing to propose a new academic department and major 
currently entitled Black Diaspora Studies, but after some conversations this weekend, maybe African Diaspora Studies, Africana Studies. The conversation is emerging, it is building. The commitment from the administration is for three or four tenure lines, um, but the, the creation will come from faculty, staff, and students, and alumni. Our goal is to establish a department that will build on six decades of student demand and faculty desire for the sustained study. So there was a concentration, but if we're looking at structures and systems, a department provides that sustainability. Um, a sustained study of the history, culture, intellectual tradition, religious, artistic, and spiritual life of the black diaspora. We've made a commitment, we have a budget plan, we have the tenure lines, and in seeking to hire a senior faculty member to lead the department, are actively fundraising for an endowed professorship for this crucial part of Grinnell's curriculum and community. As I, yes, I agree. As I look ahead to next year, I'm excited about continuing our strategic planning work centered on the five strategic principles that I identified last year. Community, educational excellence and continuity, diversity, equity, and inclusion, health and well-being, and financial sustainability. This endeavor is helping us collectively make decisions about the priorities and initiatives that will shape and define the college's direction as we seek to live out our mission. And I emphasize the word collectively because we're using a collective impact model um, from the nonprofit world, which, of which we are a part. Um, and I'm really looking forward to, to doing that way, to feeling that the power of the collective impact. We look forward this fall to engaging our entire community in ever broader engagement with strategic planning. That means you. There'll be opportunities for open discussions with alumni and families of Grinnell and further engagement with existing representative bodies. But one of the things I am most looking forward to in the coming academic year is the chance finally, to travel to alumni enclaves across the country, the world maybe, and join in as many alumni activities as possible. I relish the opportunity to meet many more of you in person. This is the live stream wave. And to get to know more of you, um, get to know your stories and why Grinnell matters to you. I have learned so much in the past three days. I've used the phrase metaphorically that I'm filling my cup I know there's hard work ahead. It was said to me when I came here, Anne, you'll have lots of challenges. People not caring is not one of them, and that is blissfully true, <laughs> blissfully true. I want to know why Grinnell matters to you because I know that, that my knowledge of that, my connection of that here on campus will create the momentum and the change we always want to see for this college. So. I'm ending. It is my hope that as you consider what I've shared with you today, you will keep in mind and take great pride in the following three main ideas. Access to a Grinnell education is stronger and more important than ever, and we are in partnership for that. And all the impressive work that's gone into ensuring accessibility is helping our beloved institution evolve into the truly global multicultural community we aspire to be in order to serve both our students and the greater good. Most days, it's one and the same thing. Secondly, then, strengthening access to a Grinnell education and prioritizing our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion reflect our core value of social responsibility here at home, here at Grinnell, and ennoble the sense of belonging that nurtures our Grinnellian community. And three, we never want to lose sight of the knowledge that you, our alumni, are the bedrock of that community. Your involvement, your care, all help bring parts of our community together, all parts of our community together in service to our mission, and it is a noble one. This evening and tomorrow, as you continue to reconnect with your Grinnell friends, revisit the places you love, and reflect on your trajectories to and from Grinnell and back again, and on the folds of time of the alum. I urge you to consider how your past has helped to shape the present. And I ask you to think about how the present honors that past and how your actions today continue to provide hope for the future. It is a time warp, if I can use that phrase. I am truly excited for what the future of Grinnell College holds. 
and what it holds in trust. And I am so deeply glad that you are here today to share in this excitement. Within the warp and weft of the emerging tapestry that is Grinnell, there has always been and will always be you, the committed alumni whose collective impact truly does change the world. Your presence here today is a testament to your dedication to the college, to future generations of Grinnellians, and to the creation of that better world. Thank you for nurturing your connections with Grinnell and for your support of future generations of students. The world, yes, needs more Grinnellians, and your support and generosity are making this possible. I thank you for your dedication, your hard work on behalf of this college, and I wish you the warmest of continuing welcomes and continuing returns on this reunion weekend. Indeed, go forth, Grinnellians, and have a safe and wonderful reunion. Thank you. Okay, who's ready for the official alumni response to the president's uh, uh, remarks? I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Thank you, President Aunt Harris. Uh, we hope you're going to be here for a while. You're, you're an amazing and spectacular individual. I've enjoyed getting to work with you. I hope to continue to work with you. Um, I will continue to work with you. Cool. Uh, these remarks are not scripted, which is how I like them, I think. Um, and, and I just, I just want to reflect very quickly. I had a 13-hour flight delay to get here. I know, but I'm sure somebody out there had it worse at some point. Um, and there were times where I'm, I'm sitting in LaGuardia thinking to myself, do I call it quits? Do I text Jane and say, plan B, time to go to plan B? Um, and I decided not to. This is where I wanted to be this weekend. And so uh, I said to myself, it's time to persist, right? Uh, Grinnellians have persisted 24 months in having a reunion. I think a few more hours is gonna be Okay, and so I pulled an all-nighter at LaGuardia, um, which I'm not, I'm not gonna say it was fun, but one of the things that, that, that reminded me of is how we as a collective do persist. Uh, we're, we're individuals who uh, appreciate and, and uh, perpetuate social justice. And when I think about what's happening in the world right now, the climate change, our planet is in peril, um, the shootings that have been happening all over this country. Our democracy is starting to fall apart. Uh, the thing that gives me the hope is being here with you. The hope for our future sits with Grinnellians persisting. We have to persist in our conversation of making sure that we do right by each other in this country and on this planet but the institution has to persist as well in the recruitment of great talent and in the graduation of great talent and in the reunion of our talent so that we can find uh, refreshment amongst one another so that we can continue to go out and persist. And so I just wanted to give you those heartfelt remarks because every time I'm with you guys, I feel like the world is gonna be better the next day. And so thank you. Thank you for being you and for allowing me to be here. And so this officially ends my presidency um, as your alumni council president.
as I step down, I do so knowing that our community is in good hands with our new president, Robert Gehorsum. Class of 1976. Check this out. Robert's had an incredible career in the computer game, ed tech, and digital media industry, more recently moving into consulting and advising a variety of startups. He's also co-author of a new book on climate change, good job, called The Carbon Almanac being published by Penguin on July 12th, and I understand it's available for pre-order. Um, and the publisher happens to also be Grinnellian Adrian Zackheim, class of 73. He's long been an active and engaged volunteer with the college's Donald and Winifred Wilson Center for Entrepreneurship and Leadership, and actively mentors students more than any alum I know. We are fortunate to benefit from his experience and passion. Thank you, Robert, for continuing to contribute and for serving in this important role. Please help me welcome Robert Gehorsum as your new president of Alumni Council. Thank you, Lester. Just a few short paragraphs between <laughs> us and dinner. It's really been an honor and a privilege. I know we use that phrase a lot, and it's thoroughly heartfelt to be able to continue and expand upon your work, and also yours, Chris, in the year before. Um, you know, earlier in the talk, uh, Lester spoke uh, about the generosity of, of Grinnellians in the past year, and I think we've all touched on what a remarkable year it's been uh, philanthropically. Um, now, I, I'd like to talk about another aspect of our alumni community, um, and one that's really central to the mission of uh, the mysterious Alumni Council, um, and that is engagement, a term we use a lot, and I'd like to, to talk uh, just briefly about that. You know, and of course it means fostering sort of the, the connections and engagement between us, and reunion is the, the epitome of that, um, which is, is terrific, and in recent years, um, I think we've all noticed that there's much more connection between the years, between the generations among alumni, and that is a really unique and very important uh, dynamic and phenomenon uh, that will really benefit Grinnell uh, going forward. And it obviously means um, fostering engagement between alumni and the institution in all sorts of other ways, and we've heard uh, about many of those stories. And I, I think we realize that, you know, we we're really fortunate given the state of higher education in general, that we're really flourishing more than ever, especially under your leadership, President Harris. And I think given the headwinds that are in American society right now, we're a really necessary institution. Um, and so, thank you. Um, and then the third part, of course, is um, really fostering the engagement between alumni and students because we need all three legs of that stool uh, to make the college um, what it is. That's what we need to stand, stand strong. Um, you know, I think we all, when, when the committee for the Alumni Awards was doing its work, we all had terrible imposter syndrome um, about <laughs> who are we to give these awards. And just as with the awards, it's hard to come away from a conversation with a current Grinnell student or a recent grad without thinking, I would never get into Grinnell if I applied now. And I know this morning <laughs> you tried to reassure us. <laughs> um, but I actually think it's a really good sign, if it's true, that we could not get in now because it's a sign of progress. Um, of the <laughs> Just as met, those of us who are parents, right, want our kids to do better than us. And so, um, I feel that way, I'd never get in. I, maybe I'll resubmit my application and, and, <laughs> and see what happens. Um, but it's, it's not the test scores, right? It's not the AP classes, it's, it's not all of those things that are kind of visible, at least not my experience. It's some ineffable quality of curiosity and of principles and of expressiveness 
um, that I show, sure don't recall having, you know, when I was a student. Although I think the Longhorn and Pub might have contributed to that lack of recall. <laughs> but the students are really inspiring. Um, and in talking to people from other colleges and universities, it's pretty clear there is something unique going on here. I don't yet have the words myself, but there's something. Um, but these students and recent grads, they're also just finding their way into the world. And so one of the very best things we can do as alumni is to find all sorts of ways to support them as mentors, advisors, listeners, connectors, whatever it takes. And there are growing institutional supports for this, and we've heard about them today. CLS and its career communities, the wonderful, ac more academic Wilson program, uh, where um, alumnus and now George Drake Professor of Religious Studies, Henry Reeves, teaches the learning from alumni course, and I just learned from him. And Henry, are you here? I'm just not sure. Okay. So we just learned it this fall. He is going to teach in the Wilson program, The Cult of Grinnell. <laughs> I can't wait. Um, um, there's also Grinnell Connect Online, which sometimes sort of flies under our radar, but which is actually growing, um, and it's very active, and it's a wonderful place for alums and students uh, to connect and to find each other. And one of the things I've been hearing, especially in the past year, as I talk to more alums in various contexts, is that many of them have not been engaged with the college for years, for whatever reason, and suddenly they have a new desire uh, to do so. In fact, uh, you mentioned Adrian, um, you know, the publisher of this book I'm a co-author of, and he said, you know, I really want to get back and involved. And it's like, I've been hearing that again and again. It's a very, very encouraging sign. Um, and we should not forget our informal social media communities, such as Everyday Class Notes and Grin Networking. Um, those informal, not connected to the college, are really powering a lot of this connectivity. Um, and so I think what I want to say is that you know, we're a generous community. And we're a generous community with our time and our expertise. And when you actually use that, it actually brings you more joy and, and more self-reflection than you can ever imagine. And more than one student um, who I've been mentoring over the past few years has come to me and said, you know, when I graduate, I want to pay it forward. I will help every student who comes after me who wants to help. And what can you say? It's just wonderful. I also want to make it clear that the work that the college has been doing on DEI um, also extends to the Alumni Council as well. Under Lester's leadership and under Chris, who initiated the Alumni Council Endowed Student Internship for Racial Justice, we've laid the groundwork for DEI principles to really be core and to infuse everything we do around our engagement work. Why? You know? We're all engaged when we feel that we belong, when we find ourselves reflected in the community around us. And I think that when we belong somewhere, we can learn from and support each other in much better ways. We can offer our perspectives, however critical they might be, and they will be, and we do it in ways that can really be heard and have impact. So to this point, even though I'm just stepping into this new role, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge our new incoming president, Bernard Jackson, class of 86. You don't have to come up and talk, but I do want to say that last year, Bernard established and led our internal Alumni Council reading group, which had a focus on DEI issues. And it was really hard work um, uh, to really read and discuss and, and for many of us to sort of be vulnerable about a lot of ideas uh, that we knew. And it brought us all closer together. And I'm really looking forward to continuing in the coming year. This year also, I just hope to have Alumni Council continue to grow its active role in building bridges between all of us, with students, and with the college that's brought us all together. So I hope you'll all continue in the effort, too. Thank you. So just a few logistics, a few closing announcements. On behalf of the council, please join me at the All Reunion Barbecue, which will be held now in front of the Rosenfield Center. 
Please check the reunion weekend schedule for the time and location of other events tonight. And whether you dance the night away at Kingdom Plaza, Gardner Lounge, or Harris Center, join your class for a special social or find a quiet corner for a chat. I hope you all enjoy this last night of reunion. If you park your cars across from Loose Hall in the Lutheran Church, move them before you go to bed tonight because there's a service tomorrow morning. And now, let's eat. <laughs>